Yes, let's Are do you, it. You, oh, God. It's, I'm, start, I'm starting to get sweaty. It's okay. I'm used to it. Kate Hansen, welcome to the Rugged Angel Podcast. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Camila, <laughs> for inviting me. You can tone down the fake. Um, <laughs> we're, all, we're all good here. We're all friends here. I am so excited, though. Okay. Yeah, I know. And that's one of the things I like about you. You are genuinely excited about a lot of things. And um, yeah, a lot of times, because vo- you're kind of hard to read a lot. Uh, you can't for before I started to work with you I didn't know if you were just like really just I mean you are sarcastic super <laughs> and you are a little bit just kind of like Meh, about a lot of things but there are, there are other things that you would think that you would be like super sarcastic about but no you're like genuinely excited about it I just really feel feelings i.e. pickle fest <laughs> <laughs> I just feel feelings really intensely but yeah no I mean I get really excited about things and I get really grossed out by things and I probably (laughs) should be a little more neutral, but that's just the way I am. Well, that's fine. I am what I am. I am. I is what I is and that's all that I is. How's your day going so far? It's awesome. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to run the AC. So um, if you guys hear a little whirling in the background, it's a hot summer here in Pittsburgh and I can't play this heat game. So how's your day going? (laughs) It's awesome. It's fantastic. Now that I'm here, it's great. I'm excited. (laughs) It was a it was a, a weird day. They're all um, weird days. <laughs> if they're good ones, they're weird ones. Word. And okay, so where are you from originally? I know you're from the Pittsburgh area. I am. I'm from the... I used to say suburbs, and then I realized that's inaccurate. I'm from a very rural area, just about an hour outside of Pittsburgh, called Greensburg. But I um, went to, like did a lot of activities and went to Latrobe high school, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with Latrobe. I know the name. Yeah. It's a, it's over there. It's like, it's like, yeah. Is Greensburg near like before, like right before or after Somerset? Is that near Somerset? It's before Somerset. Yeah. So if you're driving from here, heading just towards Somerset, it's like 45 minutes and then Latrobe's probably another 15, 20. Okay. So, so what was that like for you? Cause I mean, oh, this is how we're, okay. (laughs) All right. All right. Um, Very rural area. Yeah. Well, I now consider myself a country girl. I think I've always really? been. Yeah, totally. But you were, when you were living there, you were like, no, nah, I need to get to the city. Kind of. I mean, I always like envisioned myself moving, like the second I turned 18, moving very, very far away from where I was. Uh-huh. And that didn't happen, obviously, which is crazy to me. But hey, whatever <laughs> works, right? But yeah, it was really nuts because I wasn't, you know, I was sort of. The, the area is really ki- was kind of interesting because there's a lot of really, really rich people and a lot of really, really poor people. Okay. So we were kind of like in the middle there, mm-hmm. um, like my family growing up, but I had a lot of weird trying to fit in and I didn't really fit in anywhere. As we all did. Yeah, I think that's pretty standard. You know, I don't know if it's just standard because I feel like I'm not friends with anybody that was like oh yeah high school was great like it was perfect I yeah. said it like I was in I was this and blah blah blah, blah. yeah now that you mentioned <laughs> I haven't met anyone like that either so I don't know if it's just so it's it's the norm to us I guess yeah but it had to be good for some people somebody enjoyed it yeah call in if you had a great experience. <laughs> Let's get those phones up. Right, exactly. Let's get, let's get the phones lighting yeah. up. I wouldn't say, I, I would definitely say it was, I really like my hometown now. Mm-hmm. I really, my parents were awesome. Um, yeah, I had a really, really good growing up experience, I right. think, just overall. If you, like, compare it to other people's and right. their lives, I had a lot of opportunities and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, moved to Pittsburgh when I was 18, and I have never, ever left. Did you move here for school? Yeah. So, so went I, to... I went to, well, I went to a school in Greensburg for a year because I don't want to leave my band. <laughs> yeah, dumb. Put a, like, put a pen in school. Hey, let's go kids back, out there. Let's go back to your band. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone tells you in your life, don't do dumb shit. <laughs> Maybe don't major in art. <laughs> Maybe don't like make decisions based on your like stupid garage band. <laughs> Listen to them. 
So you went to school for a year in Greensburg for your band. Yeah. What was this band? It was like, you know, alternative garage, whatever. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was young and I can't believe that people would come to see 18 to 16 to 20 year olds play. Like we used to play at Millvale Industrial Theater, which was a venue that had underage shows and like people would come. You're quite the following. Well, not I, kind of. I mean, it was like it was weird because I was the only girl in a band in, in that area. There weren't a lot of really? bands so like it's a country. You what know? did you play? Uh, guitar. Really? I started out playing bass and I was like, oh, I can't be the woman that plays bass. That's so lame. So I played rhythm guitar and I'm a really bad guitarist. Oh, I thought you were going to say badass. No, <laughs> no, I'm not good at playing. A guitar is not my instrument. Do you so still play at all? I not crack so out the acoustic and I like do. Wonderwall? I was, I, <laughs> anyway, it's <was> wonderful. <laughs> no, better than that. I was doing these like really genuine, heartfelt Lisa Loeb sublime covers just to like don't joke it's fun it's actually kind of funny <laughs> that's why i bought an acoustic I, I had this like um blip in my life where i was very depressed so i bought an acoustic guitar and i started doing sublime covers and i was like maybe i'll have this cover band that's like ironical sublime and i'm really still not good but yeah i just play like john denver and sing to myself and that's it that's adorable. I, I I would pay money to see that. Oh, <laughs> careful what you wish for. Ten dollars tops. We, careful what you wish for. But yeah, there's so, an acoustic downstairs. Oh my god, no, I don't. It's like I do it every every six months, eight months. I'll crack it out and be like, oh, I should start playing again. Then I'll see like on my old pedals, and I'll be like, oh man, I should totally start playing again. But like so many other things I want to do, yeah. I don't have time for that. I did it, you know? Yeah. It was all right. It was fun. And then until it wasn't, and I quit that when I was probably like 22, 23. So, so how long were you in the band? From about, I would say 16, we started playing maybe shows 17 or so. Like we used to play oh. at Ray coffee house. Do you remember? I don't know if you lived here. Um, that took like a, what year was that? I want to say like 2000, 2001, 2000. I was here. Yeah. I it was at Chatham. It's like in the basement. So, um, but yeah, we had to obviously play a lot of underage shows and there wasn't, we didn't really play at bars ever. So mm. I would say I played for about five years, five, six years. Wow. Yeah. What was the name of the band? Oh God. If you, I mean, if, if it's top secret. It's we don't not know. top secret. The copyrights. Yeah. Which at the time we thought was clever. And now there is another, there's like a punk band called the copyrights really? and they're like semi-famous. So I'm like, Hey, we weren't so dopey. Maybe <laughs> it's not terrible. It's not. Yeah. I mean. We had a brainstorm session, which is like one of the only things I remember from that time period. But we just wrote down like 50 names or so between the three of us. And we were just like, this is all shit. This is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like we couldn't agree on anything, let alone a name. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So you've left the band now. Yeah. Left and the you've, music. You've moved to, to Pittsburgh to go to what school did you go to? Pitt. I went to Pitt. And what did you study? Um... At first, I did general studies because I couldn't get into real pit. <laughs> I wasn't the best student, let's say that. Um, but then I ended up majoring in art because that's really the only thing I do. And I minored in Russian and Eastern European studies, which, again, kids, if you're thinking about Russian. majoring in art and Russian, maybe think about something else <laughs> like a plan B. So you just, I mean, you just thought it was interesting or there was a, a full... Did you have a plan? Was there a goal in mind? No goal. I mean, I I couldn't not do art because that's all I can do. I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, for like the Russian European yeah. stuff. Well, I, you know, they have a really solid Slavic language department at Pitt. And it okay. they've got really great, brilliant faculty. And I took some, I think, a literature course and a film course that okay. was like, you know, pre-Soviet Russian film or something. I was like, this is awesome. It's so wow. faceted this culture so mm. i was like i just yeah i'll just do language and got really sucked into it wow yeah I, okay i've got like a couple <laughs> questions for me in my head right now are you still into the um no the, no the, the, the... i re it's one language is so difficult because if you don't use it you yeah. lose it and i'm un i've unfortunately lost i think a lot of it you never got a chance to go to russia oh i did yeah i went to um they have a program through Pitt that i i went Oh, one really? summer yeah and it was like you study intensive language so it wasn't it was just like exhausted because you just like study you're in school for six hours and then you have like four hours of homework and oh, then everyone's god. like let's go party and i'm like oh my god 
there's no air conditioning and we have to be at school at like 8.30. How long were you there? I think it was like a five-week program. Oh, man. Yeah. So you didn't really get a chance to do too much of anything other than studying. and. Yeah, it was. I mean, I did sightseeing and saw a lot of like public bleeding. Violent, violent, violent place. Yeah, crazy. So you wouldn't go back? Is that? <laughs> I actually would if I had uh, probably like someone to show me around or like maybe stay in a smaller town. Right. I think you get a better experience that way. I was in Moscow and it's like everyone speaks English and they don't want to hear you try to buy gum in Russia oh. in Russian, you know, and <laughs> it's like <laughs> they're like just fu- just say it just, in English. It's like I I, I speak yeah. English. No, no, no. Yeah, I speak English. Yeah, thank like, you. Just give me the money. It's fine. <laughs> but no, it was great. I loved it, and I loved Pitt. So yeah. So you have a very unique and eclectic type of art that you do. Um, I don't even know really how to describe. It. I'm not well versed in artes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not either. So great. <laughs> but um, from what I've seen, I haven't seen very much of it. Um, it's I don't even know. How, do you, how would you describe what? Because I know you, you're you with this art collaborative mm-hmm. called Dad Pranks. Dadpranks.tumblr.com. <laughs> First of all, where did the name come from? That's funny because we were we had a show or something. And this is like we were just had been making work at that time. And uh, we're like, what should we call ourselves? And my, uh, our friend, our collaborator, Isla, was like, well, my friend owns dadpranks.com. We're like, let's just steal that. <laughs> so so we someone just owned the, web, the, yeah. the domain name. And... and she's like, well, maybe I should check with them. And she did. And he was like, yeah, whatever. So that's where that came from. <laughs> and it's like not funny. It, it kind of does speak to our aesthetic, though, which is very much over. You know, we mm. started doing these post-internet kind of small making photos or gifts or video after it had already been kind of like cool five years ago. So, and like the whole dad comedy phenom as well is kind of like, yeah, I guess that kind of does work with it. If you're, you've latched on to things that are now old in pop culture and that's, that seems about right for a dad. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like dads are just like late to the game. Kind of (laughs) maybe that's the first time I thought of it that way, but I like that. Yeah. So when did that start? When did, Oh, God. Hmm. I want to say like 2013, which okay. feels so long ago. It's just, we've just been living a rough life. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I know yeah. it's only three years, but it, it does feel like fucking ages. It feels like we just did this like yesterday, but we've, I guess we've been, yeah, 2013. Going strong. Yep. So what's the typical dad prank? Wow. Well, dad prank art. Not to like drone on about it, but I love talking about stuff and everything. So, I mean, with the, we had no uh, delineated goal in mind going into it. It was mostly like, let's just hang out and do weird shit and film mm-hmm. it. So we started doing that and we realized, I mean, the group was curated by one person, um, Nina Sarnelli, Nina Sarnelli dot com, um, who's a really brilliant artist. And she gathered people that had a similar interest in the Internet and Internet aesthetic okay. together to kind of get together weekly and just have like a we used to do a craft night, just our friends. Um, but none of us do crafts, really. So it was more of like an art hang. And uh, yeah, it, it we kind of realized we all shared a similar aesthetic, which mm-hmm. was like Internet, post-Internet stuff okay. um and then we realized that we were kind of fetishizing objects that were commercial or had a lot of female properties to them but but looking at them as objects okay. and not in just playing with them so okay. um that's kind of how that started and so a typical prank is hilarious and i kind of wish i had video of behind the scenes but it would have to be stop motion because these things take so long (laughs) so the first hour and a half would be just setting up lights and (laughs) i don't know why we have (laughs) everyone's gonna hate me for saying this but it just takes us a really long long time time. yeah a real long time but we we all bring objects that are interesting to us so you know like things that we collect we'll also go on like a shopping trip together to like the family dollar Mm -hmm. um that's how the original dad prank started. We would just have huge Tupperware bins full of shit, just dump them out in the studio and then kind of play with them. Just kind of manipulate yeah. it in some way, shape or form, like whether it be video or photos or like gluing them on something. We or- would just kind of, s- someone would say, Hey, look at this. Let's find all of these orange things or, you know, and then you sit like this and then you do this and I'm going to throw this at you. <laughs> 
or let's try this with put the gloves on and you know here's this bag of fake teeth or whatever so we we talk about it it's very very spontaneous collaboration yeah. but there's no some of us will come to, would come in like oh i want to do this thing with these coat hangers and i but it would never happen because it would just it's too hard to implement your idea on other people. It's just really like us riffing off of each other. So it's like a legit collaboration. Like yeah. you guys are actually sitting there and coming up with this. You are you're like the art artist improvs. Yeah. Like the improv team. That's of kind the of art funny. World. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. I mean, no one no one would be entertained but us watching that. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mean like for people to sit there yeah. and watch you do this, but just like what your um what you end up with. Yep. So yeah. And we've done like kind of more um, like styling situations where people have commissioned us for uh, not commission for free, <laughs> asked, asked us, us. To, do, <laughs> <laughs> to do like, you know, given us a thematic and said, we want these photos or whatever. And so there's we've done different partnerships, maybe not all the, te- the team members, mm-hmm. I guess it's not really team collaborative members doing things, but um Yeah, so it kind of runs the gamut, but it's mostly just inspired by post-internet aesthetics, I would say. Is there any place that you see, is there any place in particular that you want this to go, or you guys are just enjoying it We're just enjoying it, yeah. It's really just the, it's, we didn't expect to ever show anything, it was just kind of a thing that we were doing as like a gag, you know, and like messing around and hanging out. (laughs) And it turned out into something glorious. Yeah, well, (laughs) debatable, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Some of the things that you do, they're, I don't even know how to really explain them. Like, you're, like, manipulating old computer technology or fucking, like, I don't, I can't even describe what it is you do because I don't understand the software behind You mean my, my, my practice? That's yeah. like, unrelated to dad pranks? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Just kind of. <laughs> no, that's. So that's, okay, that's something separate from dad pranks. Yeah. That's just you, yourself. Okay. So what is that? about like explain that the best you like layman's terms i guess okay um which is easy because i do not do art speak like i can't carry a conversation with artists I'm, they're like name drop name drop you know reference <laughs> and i'm like i don't know <laughs> i think it looks really fucking cool sorry <laughs> <laughs> but um but, like there's something you've been doing with like two bit animation or something um for example your show recently yeah at space yeah there's something that you did there please i can't okay that's um <laughs> like, what do you what do you call that i think that's my like final piece my final machinima piece and to break that down into machinima not, machinima so you've probably seen machinima a lot of you probably have without knowing what it is. It's mm. like when you've got like a fallout fanboy who's like making a video about how his, the main character is falling in love with a dog or something. And it's basically taking screen caps from a video game, editing it into a different narrative. Okay. So um, I use The Sims. That piece is The Sims 4. I've previously done pieces with Sims 3. Um Where And if you Google Sims Machinima, you'll see all kinds of crazy, like, teenagers that make these beautiful films that are, like, composed and shot from different angles. Really? So the game engines in and of themselves have recording capabilities for this practice. But I kind of, and I'm definitely not the first, this is, like, again, something that people have been doing, well, like, a decade before I even had this idea um, of just taking these video these existent video game engines and making them into their own narrative interesting so that's what that is it's actually easier than animation i think it's a time consuming obviously but you know it's better than building something in 3d modeling software and trying to animate it plus you've got this familiarity with the sims people know what that is Uh and it's like accessible i think you kind of know you're you're seeing something that exists already in the world you're not completely alienated okay what would you call your art medium what would you is there do you really have like a specific because i feel like you're kind of you you draw you paint you i used photography. to i haven't really like yeah it's almost like you kind of incorporate all of those things you seem very computer tech savvy and um, you, you love the gadgets <laughs> and all the new apps and whatnot yeah. so you just kind of like mesh them all together i guess is there one medium that you enjoy more than others that's a good question um, yeah, I'm not really media specific. I would say that I get, I'm inspired by 
learning new techniques and software. Okay. So like, that's what really gets me off Mm. is like doing something new. Like I'm not, I'm kind of Jack of all trades, master of none, Mm. you know, like I can do a lot of things, but really badly, (laughs) but I like that. I don't care. I just want to, you know, maybe mess around with clay someday because I've never seen paper clay before or whatever. Mm. So I just like learning about new mediums, but I would say things for me start concurrently with, a medium and an idea. I wouldn't, you know, there's a lot of artists that have an idea first, then they find the medium that okay. really suits that idea or uh, conveying that content. Mm-hmm. But I'm more like, I kind of come at them parallel. Okay. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like, Oh, well I really think this software is sexy, but it reminds me of this other thing. And so I just kind of suss out those ideas um, in parallel. Okay. Have you always been this artistic type? Has it, like at what point in your life was it like oh yeah I like fucking around with artwork like yeah, but, just always yeah just always that's like, been your thing I used to joke with my parents I mean I kind of made a joke earlier but yeah when you're going to college it's like there there was no question that I could do anything else because I can't do anything else other than art you there know there was nothing else that no that interested you no mm-hmm. there was no plan B <laughs> no there was no plan B like there, I'm just really ba- and I'm not even that good at art I'm just really bad at everything else and it's just what I like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need to call into the therapy show after this, but no. Um, yeah, there's no, I'm not really interested in, in much else. It seems, I mean, maybe it's philosophical, but I feel like art is kind of, um, encompasses a lot of other things and, mm. enco- and draws it into a climax. You've mm. got philosophy, you've got music, you've got all of these other elements that you can just call art. So, right. There's, I mean, art is kind of subjective. Right. And so is there anything that, that really draws you in like going to art shows or if there's like music or like, what is it that that does outside of learning new shit, like get you off? <laughs> like what? I think like, can you lose yourself in uh, an art exhibit for X amount of time? Does, is, are there songs that pull out emotion in you? It's funny. Cause my boyfriend, we were talking about this last night, just art, you know, in general. And he's like, all of your art is really based on emotions, but not like, not normal ones. Not like, (laughs) (laughs) and I would say the thing, the thing that gets me off is like having, seeing something or experiencing something that makes me feel a way that I haven't felt autonomously Mm -hmm. or uh, that I have felt and, but that I wasn't expecting to feel. Okay. So, it's very rare that I will really get excited about an art exhibit because there's not, you know, 90% of the time, there's, excuse me, there's a lot of good painters out there, but I'll look at a painting and then it's like, okay, you know, it's great, talented, good content, but I'm not, it's not like punching me in the face and like right. slapping me and bruising me in my brain, <laughs> you know? Um, so <laughs> it's not pulling anything out. Yeah. I'm pulling up my teeth. Yeah. But w- yeah, that's like, I want my teeth to be pulled and I want to feel like stupid. No. And I, yeah. I want to feel disgusted and awesome, but scared or like, ex- I want to feel extreme in some way. Okay. I get that because I don't, there's not really a lot I can, I can accept and I can appreciate the technique and that, you know, yes. Okay. You are very good at drawing or painting that that is a great painting but i don't feel anything and i just kind of thought that i'm i was missing something as opposed like on the flip side i can watch a movie and outside of feeling the normal whatever the narrative is trying to tell you there will be if it's really good if it's something that really gets at me i can really feel it and it's something that i want to experience over and over again that feeling right so i get what you're saying and also you know there have been like a lot of photography is more i enjoy photography more than paintings yeah I don't know. It's just sorry, painters. It's just the way I'm wired. Like I yeah. again, I appreciate you, painters. What you guys do, I can't do it. Yeah, so it's great. We love to look at it. Yes, it's amazing. I think painting's <laughs> coming back in it? style. It's maybe it's a new I don't, thing. I don't know. Is it, so it's, it's hard be... to tell in Pittsburgh. You know, like we just miss and we miss all the trends and we miss all <laughs> right. the flow and it's we very don't... ebb and flow. And it's a lot of ebb. Yeah, here. it's here. It's just it flies right over our heads, which is great because we miss the whole meth thing. <laughs> <laughs> we missed the house.
have any new, any other projects coming up that you're super excited about? I really don't. And that's exciting me in and of itself <laughs> because I just, yeah, this is like kind of meeting with you is my last commitment for a, oh, really? a while, I think. I mean, what until, is that like? I don't know yet. I'm not in it yet. <laughs> so I, well, we have a show. Dad Pranks has a show possibly coming up at an apartment show. Um, so I don't want to mention that because I don't I don't know if it's definite what's an yet. apartment show just at somebody's apartment. Yeah, I oh, mean okay. these are these are things that are kind of like um, things in other cities but haven't really taken off in Pittsburgh, where basically you go to someone's apartment and it's like they're showing someone that they've discovered or that they've curated or whatever. Huh. So we're going to be doing one of those, but um, but but the content is up to us, which is exciting. So okay. we get to we don't have a thematic, we don't have a curator, we don't we can just kind of play. So that's our that's the only other deadline that I have. Mm. Um, but I think it's important to get back to being able to play around and try new things. So I've been trying to learn new techniques and things, and maybe have new collaborations. I don't know. Does it kind of run the gamut of what you guys end up with? Like, are there any? any eh. Is there anything literary or is it there's film, I'm sure. Um, and there's also just like actual visual art pieces. So just kind of whatever. We kind of want to use this opportunity to have some like objects in the show instead okay. of so like make some sculpture. OK, maybe. I don't know. We do one of our collaborators. Um, she doesn't live in Pittsburgh anymore. So I'm not really sure what her um, capacity is. She's in school, but she's a poet. She's actually like my favorite poet in the whole world oh really i don't know many poets but she's <laughs> really so great insane. it's your favorite <laughs> yeah she's awesome so there may be like when we've done shows there have been she's written poetry um like about century three mall mm -hmm. um so we may get some literary stuff it depends on what she's feeling like but is there ever any performance art there has been in the past. There probably won't be for the show since it's someone's dining room. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, so the cool thing about having a, a team is that we can work together, but we can also kind of contribute different things to one goal. Right. Um, for example, uh, we did a project at Century 3 Mall for Open Engagement, which is a conference about socially engaged art mm -hmm. that was in Pittsburgh. I want to say it was last year. Okay. Last spring, maybe. Um and you can you can check that out at sensory three mall dot com. Sensory three, yeah. Okay. So S E N S O R Y. Um, obviously, a play on the the name of the mall, Century Three. And we uh, there was performance art included um, in that project. So we did a uh, kind of an examination of the mall, looking at it <laughs> as it as if it were. Um, I'm really not good at words. This is embarrassing. And anyone, I hope no one that I collaborate with is listening to this description <laughs> because they're all like great, brilliant people. And they're always like, Kate, shut up. You're like, <laughs> you can't talk about this stuff. But, um, you know, looking at it as, as an experience, um, kind of like a metaphysical experience. And we led tours of people that came to this conference through the mall. We had consultations by, um, an architect to talk about the architecture of the mall we had a botanist talk about the mall plant life we did um one of our collaborators did this great project with mall camo so she dressed a few performers as um mall textures and had them like hide throughout the oh my god yeah check out the photos they're really great that that was really like visually interesting <laughs> um another collaborator he was a kind of a guest artist from miami did a slow clean of the fountain where he took all of the change out and cleaned it and then slowly returned all of the, the algae and the coins through the, through the, the day that these events were happening. <laughs> so I know you have this love of malls. Now, did this come before or after this? It was like you have this appreciation for malls. I, I think it was, it's always been there. It's been nascent. <laughs> it's been a part of me. But it was rediscovered when, like I said, we'll, you know, um, my collaborators and I will, we will get a lot of stuff. So sometimes that means we'll go to like the family dollar. And in this case, um, my friend Alina and I went to the mall just as like a thing to do. Mm -hmm. And we were like, she's really good at finding spots that are different or weird. And so she, I think it was her suggestion. And we were like, oh my God, you know, it's a, it's a dying mall. Um, it's been 
recently purchased by some sort of company. They're going to be doing something different with it. Yeah. I don't like to say dying mall because then people think that we're like fetishizing it as like ruins porn or something, yeah. which we're not doing. Okay. We're just kind of like I, that mall in particular was very important to me when I was growing up. My grandmother lived out there okay. and we would escape her house. She'd go there. <laughs> Sorry, mom. So Century Three was a safe haven. It was a safe. It was just like a, a thing to do, you know, a fun thing to do when you're sitting around on a Sunday and you're a right. kid. And it was like really flourishing at that point. Right. Um, so to see it from that experience in the early '90s, same aesthetic, now at 20 percent occupancy. Wow. Um, is very interesting, sad, but also I think we the goal of this project was not to exploit it, but to. Ex- have people experience the potential of it or realize that like this is a great public space mm. that you don't have to buy things in you can right. you can do artist led tai chi or you know um ride the carousel or whatever without really paying a lot of money or, right. bu- or buying into the commercialism that is a mall right. it's climate controlled it's it's safe there's security you right. know it's comforting and we um before we did this project, we talked to the mall management. We were like, well, what's your demographic? Like, who comes to malls? And she's like, it's women who are 30 to 45 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And we're like, that's us. Maybe it was a little bit younger because we've got some younger <laughs> members. But it was like our demographic. And we're like, really? this is why we feel this weird womb-like <laughs> comfort. <That's> a- <laughs> that is so bizarre to me. I've never, ever thought of a mall in that way i've never thought of a mall that deeply like it's just never been there i'm more on the other on the flip side of being a person who doesn't particularly like being around a lot of people yeah so like the last probably 10 years of my life i've avoided i've tried to avoid malls as best as i could try a dead mall (laughs) (laughs) you don't like people (laughs) but you know it's really i think an interesting place maybe not just for artists for People need space, you know, like musicians need space. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of I, probably other uh, practices that need space. And it's it's this really safe kind of huge public space that. This is true, especially if, you know, they're, they're pretty low on occupancy. That's yeah, that's a great idea, actually, to um, rent out old store spaces. <laughs> yeah. Which we were I mean, that I you haven't asked me about the success of this project, but. I mean, <laughs> to be like Frank, I, we, our intention was to have a longer relationship with the mall uh-huh. and maybe do something like that. But just we didn't have the capacity because we're not making money. We're not selling anything. Like right. I, And we're definitely not the first group of artists to do that. I mean, there's a lot. Um, back in the 80s, I think, um, I apologize if I got this date wrong. I had a friend who her father is a painter and he was a professor, but they had a group of painters that actually rented a space like a a collective and sold their work out of one of the stores at the mall. Interesting. Yeah. I think most wanted fine arts um, did that at the waterfront. too. Yeah, I think you're right. But we don't sell objects and we're not interested in like providing another retail experience for people. Yeah. So it just didn't really work out. But. It was fun. (laughs) That's quite all right. It's it was definitely an experience, I'm sure. Yeah. And just I guess thinking about the mall in such a different frame of mind. What do you call like metaphysical? Like what? What what did you? How did you describe it? I'm like I know everyone's rolling their eyes right now, but (laughs) well, there were you know there were meditation spots. So there was a a guided tour that we gave, but also like these self guided meditation spots that you could like wander the mall i did um i don't know how successful they were i did like these ambient tracks that were meant to be listened to while you're mall walking um i sampled sounds like the the hangers at one of my our favorite stores and like the hand dryers and things like that and remixed in um which this is kind of full circle to the music i don't know if we talk about the music at all but i sampled in um, some music that I heard that was playing overhead, um, Wilson Phillips, or I think Shania Twain was one of them, yes. but, um, <laughs> yeah, so there was like this kind of contemplative and there are a lot of malls. I think there's one in Calgary, Toronto, Canada, they do Tai Chi and people go to the mall to do, to, to walk in the morning. Well, yeah, I know that's kind of been a thing for a while. Mm-hmm. I used to, there for a while, maybe that's why I don't particularly care for malls. I used to work malls several times um but yeah i guess 
you know, that's always the thing. Like, you always find a spot that's totally open for people to do Tai Chi or exercise. Mm-hmm. Like, down in Market Square, I don't understand why there's this need or that you want to exercise out in the middle <laughs> of downtown, in the middle of the day. It's fine if that's what you want to do, but you couldn't pay me to no. get, <laughs> get To me, I think being outside is different than being in a mall because you can go, you can have your your mall walking group meet every week all year. You're not going to get snowed right. out. You're not going to get rained out, you know. Um, but we kind of like that idea of these people that – in that keep coming back and feel like it's a safe place to exercise and kind of turn your brain off. So yeah. that's what, that was my message. You don't have to be on the lookout for somebody yeah. to come snatch you up or anything like that. Right. No well, potholes. You're not going to trip over some like <laughs> dog shit on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> well, what haven't you done yet that you really want to do? That's such a good question. I want to move out of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kind of no, over that not. at this point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes and no. Um, Is there anywhere in particular that you would want to move? I think in in an unrealistic way, I'd love to live in the Pacific Northwest, but that's just too far from my family. I love forests and hiking and um, recreational marijuana. Just kidding. Just cut that out. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> or leave it. Whatever. <laughs> just like progressive people, coffee shops. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. I mean, it's like temperate weather. They don't get crazy snow, whatever. My second choice is always like Southern California because who doesn't want to live near the beach God. all the time? And yes. like just the concept of having to drive everywhere is kind of interesting to me, like a suburb a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, a little bit. Cause I, I feel very, I think that's why I consider myself a country girl. I feel very like constricted in a city hmm. where I don't have enough space interesting. and I'm walking and I'm taking the bus and like, you know, there's people just always everywhere. around, always surrounded by people. Yeah. I'm just out of control. It's like, I'm not, I'm not uh, locomoting myself. Right. Is that a word? It is today. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, I think that's uh, one of the things why I I don't take the bus tour. One of the reasons why, one, I'm too lazy to stay on the bus's schedule. Yeah. Um, and two, I just don't want to be around strangers like that. I just... Well, you're, you're, it's, you're out of control. It's not your control. Right. You, you don't get to go or you don't get to stop or whatever. Yeah, you, you I hate know. that. When I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, by God, <laughs> if anything keeps me any longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> way yeah totally so it's just you want to move out of pittsburgh uh i would that's not a priority for me honestly at this point like i'm happy where i am yeah um i've always had opportunities here it's great blah 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 i think in terms of um artwork yeah there's i there's a lot of things that i want to learn still i want to i want my practice my personal practice to keep evolving and Mm -hmm. um like i said i'm over machinima i've been over it for a while i don't know what i'm going to do next so yeah, there's a, I, I can't, I don't think I have one goal in mind, but I like that question. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. How long is it? I mean, I know you don't have like a, a real amount of time, but is it difficult for you to, what is the process like of you to learn new things? Like, like, is this something you need to like throw yourself all into at that point in time? Or is it more like bits at a time? Do you, can you read about it and be cool or do you need to be immersed in it and see it? I need to do it with my hands. Like I can't read about it. That's why I can't talk about art because I can't like read about it and just be like, Oh, this person did this in this like year. And this means nothing to me. Yeah. I don't, I can't absorb things that way and I'm just not interested, but yeah, the process as I get older has been more difficult. You know, I'm like tired. I don't feel like Uh, practicing, you know, which you need to do. You need to just do it. And so I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll just stop and become a normal person. Do you think? I don't. That, I don't think so. I my I joke with people. What would happen though? Like if you just like woke up one day and you're like, I'm absolutely over it, and then you just I'm normal like, now. Twenty years from now, I show up with you see Kate and she's got like you know a couple kids and she's baking pies all khaki, day. Like, khaki shorts and a polo. <laughs> That's what my parents wear. <laughs> with white New Balance sneakers. Not that I care about, I mean, I could wear that now. It doesn't matter. But I just feel like there's, you just, it's like whatever. There's, there's, a, you're there's just a definite happy. uniform. Yeah. And you're just happy. You just go about your day and yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, 
I want to talk about my boyfriend all the time. He's always like, you're just weird, and that's okay. That's great. I'm real weird, and I've always been real weird, and I probably will always be real weird. Yeah, I've always been, I used to be concerned about when I was younger, like, what kind of adult am I going to be? Like, yeah. at what point is this, do I have to put away anything fun and yeah. just have to do the, go to the job and blah, blah, blah. And, but by God, I have refused yeah. to do that. <laughs> if you'd look do you look around. F- do you feel like you're going to just hang it up someday? Hang up what? Just what you do. Just, you know, in the same way. I really don't think so. Yeah. I, I could see scaling back like once we have children or once I get old and just tired, but I don't see just me stopping altogether. Yeah. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day about the 48 hour film project and there, I'm sure there will be a time when I'm just like over that or we move out of the city. And, um, I, I have a couple of prospects in mind of who I would like to hand that that title Mm -hmm. down to. (laughs) So, I mean, I'm, I'm totally fine in a few more years, but you know, yeah. I, I I wouldn't want to just kind of be stuck yeah. there. I is would've... it because you get tired when you get older? Is that what people just, the way they stop? Or you, they just really never did anything? Who I are these people kinda, around I, us? <laughs> I think it's got a lot to do with just getting... It just, I think it just depends on the person. Yeah. Really, because I mean, sure, we get more, we get tired when we get older, but... Then again, you've got these people like when you see like these videos online and stuff like this woman is like 75 years old and is like winning these fucking bodybuilding competitions. Like, yeah, that was never me. Yeah. So <laughs> there's just like a certain there's different types. Yeah. And like my mom is 60 and she she's still like has this create like she's she's still learning new things like that's on cool. the regular basis. That's cool. Like and that's what she she loves taking online courses and like. Really? Yeah. Like, and like what? Like right now, her thing is um, she is doing a lot of uh, sewing. So she's oh, like okay, making, yeah. making a bunch of baby clothes and stuff for my little sister's baby <laughs> coming up. Nice. Uh, yeah. And Congrats. Um, she's like, she just did another one with uh, leather. She wants to like. So she's learning that online? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Good for her. She's really, she's doing really well at it. Like I, I think I've kind of commissioned her to make me a couple like leather bracelets and oh, stuff. yeah because <laughs> yes, there's like some i've been wanting a, several different ones but they're so damn expensive yeah yeah, yeah. i'm like hey mom you need like a cool like thing you can wear to the ren fair <laughs> yes like, yeah so there's like all these different things like she could do this stuff and she could probably make a lot of money i, I yeah. wish if she weren't so afraid of the whole furry phenomenon she could probably be making a lot of dude people just travel to do ren fairs if you learn I leather know. like make like Make your boobs pop yeah, exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. What the, is, it? is that the ma- corset? Yeah, and make weird masks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I know it's still in me to to be like that, and I I've seen um, other generations of my my f- women in my family where it just doesn't. So I think my mom is kind of fighting against okay. that, and so um, and me on the flip side, I'm also fighting against it. Like yeah. I, I can't be too comfortable. Yeah, because otherwise I, I just fear like what will be on the other side i wonder if it changes when women have kids because like neither of us have kids right because yeah, i mean I, I could be a lot more tired once yeah. you have kids like running around all the time you have to worry about them or people like i mean the whole i don't know if you know about youtube family shit it's crazy like <laughs> youtube family. i don't know what this phenomenon is called i've tried to research it because it's so bizarre but kids now like my um seven-year-old roommate and my friend's 10-year-old, they all are really into YouTube, okay? And, like, high schoolers, too. But the kids are really into watching other families do stuff. I've seen this. So like, do you turn your creativity into making films about your kids just, like, no, picking their nose and stuff? No. I, I really don't see myself being comfortable with putting my kids out yeah. there like that. It's I weird. Get, I get really uncomfortable when I see people post naked photos of their kids online. Yeah, And I just... Or even just like a moment, you yeah. Know? Like a just here's like, our vacation. It's like yeah, it's just. I mean, there's just too many freaks out there in the world, yeah. and I just wouldn't feel comfortable yeah. doing that. So it's, no, it's a very specific demographic that does it. Yeah, I've noticed. It's I mean, like, you know, that's your thing, whatever. Yeah. But me personally, I just can't. I well, the YouTube stuff. I mean, there these videos are. They have four million hits of a kid playing with like right. marshmallows. Somebody else was telling me that their kid. Like that, their, their kid or somebody else's kid likes watching these YouTube videos mm-hmm. of some kids just playing with toys. Yes, 
Oh, I've I've watched many hours of this. <laughs> I do kind of like some of it, but I the ones with the families where it's like clearly that the family is directing this. App. They're just doing. They're just hanging out. They're in their kitchen. They're in their pajamas. They're unwrapping Christmas presents. It's like. Wow. You can you know it's like this rich dad that has toys yeah. that he wants to play with and wanted to have a reason to buy a camera right. and like so now he's getting sponsors by like, you know, Sony and or yeah. and whatever other kitchen appliances or whatnot. But yeah, it's very That's probably weird. what it what it ends up becoming. And I just don't understand where that market is coming from. Like why are you watching I have no whatever. It's... There's like this commercial on right now. I don't know what they're. I don't know what they're selling, but it's a family in a kitchen and they're making dinner or something, and okay. they're all like with social media and they're taking pictures and they're talking like, "Yeah, did you tweet that out? How many hits did my Instagram, my my turkey get? Oh, it's blowing up over here. Make sure you tag your mother. She needs more followers." Like, <laughs> this is the world that we live in. Welcome to 2014, Camille. <laughs> Just kidding, but I think, but I mean, in terms of like, this is what people that aren't creative do. Yeah. But it's like, but it's kind of the truth. It's like this is this. But do we turn into this? Because there is a level of creativity with you. You have to these like dads are learning photo editing or whatever, right. and um, so it's an it's level. an outlet. I guess is like is this the outlet? And then you I see you see a lot of like real basic kids watching this, thinking they're going to be YouTube famous. Right. But so many people are YouTube famous that it's like a diluted market. Exactly, and I think. Yeah, that really bugs me too. I still want to be YouTube famous. <laughs> I like I like whispering into this and how it sounds. <laughs> you enjoy how that sounds in your in your earbuds. Do you other do other podcasters whisper like this? Probably there are some that do that. I don't listen to those. I like it. <laughs> okay, that's creepy. <laughs> Sorry. How do you self care? How do you take care of Kate? I sleep a lot. That's my thing. You love sleeping I is your love, jam. It's I love sleeping. Yeah, I'm. I have friends that like meditate or they do yoga. I am so tired of hearing about yoga. <laughs> like, my Instagram feed is fucking adults doing back bends. <laughs> like it looks like it probably like, feels great. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just like great. It's like almost a competition, though, for some mm-hmm. of these people. But it's great. However you do it, whatever. <laughs> whatever makes you happy, right? But I just don't need to hear about it. Yeah. Just I'd, do it. It's like a weird community. Well, it's, it goes back to the Market Square thing. Why would you want to do things outside? Because people that do things like that, are just it's like a club. It's if like I, a clique. If I and exercise they, in my house and no one sees me, does it really happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. If I don't yes. have the cool outfit. Yes, it does. No, I, that's being so shitty. But... Yeah, I, I like to sleep, and I, I my favorite, the only thing that makes me feel good other than sleeping, mm-hmm. which is like your bed, is the only place that no one is going to hurt you, allegedly. Safe it's safe. It's like cold. It's dark. It's like my dog's there, and it gets Wi-Fi. Yeah. So my, my What self- more do you really need? <laughs> you just you need, need, like, somebody to bring you snacks. <laughs> I have that. It's oh, great. Yeah, fine. I know. It's, I'm so lucky. But why are you here now? Why aren't you in? <laughs> why aren't you in your bed? <laughs> this took a lot for me. <laughs> okay, later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> but I self care by like reading things online. I think that's like my zen. Is yeah. I'm a huge. This is gonna sound like a plug, and it's gonna like totally devalue everything I've said to this point. Not that anyone like cares, but I'm real into Reddit. And I'm really into. Oh, that's it. I just, yeah, I just ripped away all the notes I've been taking on you. Uh, I spend a lot of like that's my favorite thing to do. Why? It's like how I relax. It's because I can laugh. I can learn something, and that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from. Okay, I don't think I fully understand Reddit. I may have tried once or twice. So think of it as like a binder full of your favorite mm-hmm. magazines. Okay. <laughs> oh shit! Old reference. Right? Dead Whoa. Breaks. What? <laughs> Full of your favorite magazines or RSS feeds, however okay. you like to digest. So, like, you can read one of your favorite magazines, and then you can flip over to this other topic or whatever. Okay. So, it's a, basically a collection. And plus, I generally like to get my information in short snippets, mm-hmm. and I like for it to be crowdsourced. So, okay. I'm more likely to buy a product if someone tells me that it's good versus advertising or reading an, a blog post about it. Right. So. For me, that's it's a perfect medium because okay. I can read really ridiculous things that are like 
meme like uh-huh. dank shit. Right. Or I can read the news or people's, you know, social experiments or whatever. So okay. I spend a lot of time. So doing it, that. It, it goes and turns into a rabbit hole for you. I'm an addict. I mean, I'm not <laughs> well, going to lie. Kate and... If I don't have my iPad, I don't, if I don't have an hour of Reddit time a night, seriously to relax and decompress so this is like an every night kind of thing Mm -hmm. i mean it's it's the same with most people with like instagram or strolling through or like going through facebook or twitter yeah or watching a movie i mean i would do that too but i can't just watch something i have to be like and i am finding myself getting more and more like that and i don't like it like i i need to because I, I, there was it once upon a time I could just watch a movie, just getting yeah. like sucked into it. But now I find myself like on my phone, and I hate it. I need to. I've read that that's like I don't know how scientific this is, but that is a victim of you're a victim of the modern age. Yeah, you know, having the access it completely like um, breaks apart your attention span. I don't like it. I don't either. I don't like it at all. It's really fucking with me. Also, I love it. <laughs> So before you, uh, it's it's now time for Kate's music block. If you're listening on WMCK.FM, then you get to hear the curated songs, not by Kate, but songs that Kate has curated for this moment in time. If you're not listening to WMCK.FM, what are you doing with your life? You're just going to have to hear about these songs and why she picked them. And maybe just go to Spotify, look them up, or YouTube, or whatever. How you ever you digest your music. Um, so, Kadles. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Am I talking too much, by the way? No. Okay. This is about you. This is your time. This has... I have, a, I have a bad habit of getting really excited and talking too much. And that's what we like. Good. Here on the rugged... Okay. So, you've got <laughs> <laughs> the knife. Yeah. This was so hard to pick a song. Now, this is the... Now, all of these... I'm going to point this out there that all of these songs... Okay, I'm going to assume the way this is. The Knife is the band. Yes. All of these songs that Kate picked, I know none of. <gasps> I've heard of none of these people other than Rasputina, I think. Okay. But, yeah, this is all new to me. That's This will awesome. be interesting. So, you put, you chose The Knife... Or, yeah, a tooth for an eye by the knife. Yes. What's that about? Okay, so these uh, I would like to preface this by saying my only premise was to choose um, music songs that were by women artists. So yep. the, they may not make sense together, but whatever. No, they it. don't. They don't need to flow together. Okay, like, good. Yeah. Um, so the knife is a. They're Swedish, I believe, and they're a brother and sister. But really, the the band is um, the project is headed by the sister Karen some very long Swedish last name that right. I'm not going to butcher. But um, so she's had a few different, two different projects, the knife and fever Ray. Mm-hmm. And I went, I went back and forth. If you like this song, you should check out fever Ray because they're a little darker, but okay. the knife has kind of been around, I believe longer. I don't know much background about any of these artists. They're well, kind of just, just like, things I like. Well, yeah. Like why did you pick it? So That's I think, I don't care about what, who these people are, what they do. Okay. <laughs> great. That's great. Cause I don't, I don't fucking know. This video is rad. It's awesome. The song is rad. She does a lot of like crazy things with her vocals where I think a lot of, I read somewhere that a lot of people think that it's her brother making the music because mm-hmm. she'll like chop and screw her vocals and they'll, they'll be really deep and okay. they'll think like a man is making this music and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this jam is really tight. Okay. Also got two cut to C by Black James slash Ice. Yeah. So Black, um, this is like a song that my this guy I dated for a minute really liked, and I like stole it um, <laughs> because I don't know much about this artist. But if you like, you should look her up. She's young from St. Louis, where I think they have a really kind of cool like digital music. Um, culture. Oh yeah. So she goes by Ice now. Okay. Um, but this song is from when she was just Black James, and she does a lot of. This is like 
I think she calls it underwater hillbilly <laughs> something. She like, but she does a lot of house music too and like okay. digital stuff. We've also got Ether by Ice Peak. Ice Peak. Ice Peak. Yeah. So um, this is great. I didn't realize there was a woman in this band until I looked it up. But the song was like the first time I heard it. I just like lost my shit. Also, the video is amazing. Um, but they're just kind of low key. I don't think a lot of people know about them. Mm-hmm. Um, my boyfriend turned me on to them cause he's got like a really fantastic taste in music. Hmm. Um, but they're pretty cool. I think that they are also Scandinavian. I might be on a theme here. Yeah. as the sailor by Rasputina. This is this one's a little I would like debated not putting it in. I Rasputina has been my favorite band since I've been in junior high. Oh really? Junior high. 13 <laughs> years old. I got a Rasputina album it was their first one and I've been in love with them ever since through they've been with me through everything. Um they're maybe like a little gothy for mm. what my people, my friends know me as being, but I'm kind of like a secret goth girl. Secret? I, really? Meh, really? Okay. <laughs> I, maybe not so much. <laughs> Busted, but the, this song is kind of like a sea shanty, shanty, and I... I don't know. I like sing it in the shower sometimes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's two songs that I sing in the shower. This one and Helen Reddy's Delta Dawn. I wasn't going to put that in. So <laughs> picture me shampooing while this shanty plays. Ties that my Run Me Out by Zola Jesus. Oh, is that the bonus or is that just the No, that was one of them in here. Oh, okay. So, okay, good. I'm glad I put this in. Zola Jesus is this like little Russian girl that grew up in Wisconsin and she's super goth. And the song is, to me, this song is what nine and what it should have been written in the 90s. Okay. Like I would have played this jam a million times in the 90s right after my Nine Inch Nails CD was over. <laughs> um, I don't like a ton of her music, but I really like the song. Okay. And last, we've got Macintosh Plus <gasps> with something in like Japanese characters that I don't. Track number two. Track number two, we'll call it. On Floral On Shop. On the album called Floral Shop. This is so good. <laughs> You're gonna lose your mind. Maybe I can't not. Wait. Oh, I can't wait. So the, again, in going with like the dad pranks theme, things. Oh, my button fell off. Things that are very outdated. I don't care. I freaking love vaporwave, which is a genre of music. Vaporwave. Yeah. I have never in my life heard that genre of music. So I let Camila vaporwave. play her music in the office, but it used to be all vaporwave all the time. <laughs> 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 it gets a little weird. <laughs> So How did you get away with it? <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. No one, everyone's like, whatever. But Vaporwave kind of came after Chill Wave around, you know, 2011. Okay. Um, so it's kind of older now. I still listen to it all the time. And as I had mentioned previously in the tracks that I did for the mall, inspired by Vaporwave a little bit, where this entire album, the girl who made it was like probably 17, very young, really? maybe 22. I don't know. But Vectroid um, or Macintosh Plus for the sake of this album. But this whole record isn't like contemporary adult jazz. What are they called? You know, like Muzak smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. <laughs> yeah. Like Sade and stuff. Yeah. Um, you'll hear it. It's very like slowed down and it's got this really great, like punch of nostalgia 
that just really hits me. Like I'm getting goosebumps right now. So, um, it's, there's a visual art kind of component to vaporwave movement. Um, it's going to be really weird. Like once this gener, our generation is like in old folks homes and stuff, like like the things that'll be pumping through. (laughs) You better play me with Macintosh plus (laughs) shut up. Kate, put your teeth in. (laughs) I want my Macintosh plus please with my vitamin C. And, and on, my Metamucil and my Shanka. <laughs> and on that note, let's uh, <laughs> let's get into the Kate's blog, and then we're going to come back with questionable conversation. I just ask you a bunch of random questions. Okay. All right. You ready? And it's not a fast thing. It's not a speed round. Okay. (sighs) What album can you listen to from beginning to end? Anything Tool. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I I said that out loud. (laughs) I do. I listen to Tool a lot and I still like them and I don't care. Judge me. I don't care. That's fine. I mean, I never really got into Tool that much. I was, you know, Corn, Nine Inch Nails. Maybe even a little stabbing westward. <laughs> One of those. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Um, are you usually late, early, or right on time? Late. Favorite word? Oh. Petric- pet- wait, what was this word? Petricor? What does it I'm mean? real into that right now. It's like a new word this week. <laughs> it's the smell after the rain. Oh. Yeah, petricor. I really? think that's right. I didn't realize there was a word for it. Yeah. I love the smell after the rain. It's something about like dirt and the ozone and like it's an actual thing. You're going to ruin it. Don't tell me what, the, what it really is. All right. Um, can you juggle? I used to be able to. I haven't tried in a while. Really? Interesting. Yeah. What was your first job? Uh, first job. I think I had to clean my dad's dental office over the summer. Your when dad's I, a dentist? Yes. And my brother. Really? Yeah. So, huh. So do you, you like the you like Steve Martin's version of dentist? I was actually just listening. It's on my iPod. I was just listening to it this morning. <laughs> I I haven't heard that. Embarrassing. Oh really? No. It's, I mean, did you ever watch a little shop of horrors? Yeah, when I was younger. Okay. I'm sorry. That's. Why do you? Stop I know. It. I'm so bad at pop culture. I'm just like I no, feel like I should know these things. Oh, okay, sorry. That's what I'm. <gasps> I'm not. That's what I, <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. Not I, at I'll all. Apologize when I want to. Yep. Not sorry. But I suggest just go ahead, just Google Steve Martin dentist. Okay. And let the, I vaguely the belly remember laughs. It. Okay. Commence. Is that from Little Shop? Mm-hmm. Okay. I vaguely remember it. Yeah. Okay. Would you survive the zombie apocalypse? A zombie apocalypse. I have two responses. Two responses. Okay. One, if they caught me when I was having a bad day, dead. <laughs> like if I was on my period or like didn't sleep the night before or like went out or like. Just, just had a cold or like my allergies. Like ripping yeah. off zombie heads. I would, I would die. I would be like one of the first dead. Oh, really? You yeah. wouldn't survive Mm-mm. on a bad day? No, okay. no, 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 no. But if I was like well rested your... and I, I would probably ha- good, have a good go of it because I'm like super physically strong. Okay. Um, but I don't have a, I don't have a massive will to live. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> I don't really have any, like, oh, my kid's over there. I got to live for her. No, I don't have any of that. It's none of that. It's just like, eh, we'll Life see how far Life is meaningless, can... <laughs> so, like, just end it now. We'll see how far we can go with this. Yeah. Or maybe it's just, you think of it more of, like, who gets high score. Yeah. <laughs> like, think of it more like a game. <laughs> it depends on, I think, who, I, who I'm with, because that always seems to make or break who survives. Group. Yeah. Interesting. So, if you've got a lot of weak ones that you could push in the way. Right. Your favorite song to sing. <laughs> oh, I think we covered this. The, there's a few Rasputina songs that I sing, but also Delta Dawn in the shower. Right, right. That's right. Uh, do you know any jokes? Um, I do. They're not radio friendly. Uh, yeah, they're not. They're really bad. Are they? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, you can tell me later. Yeah. I have. Here's one. Um, what <laughs> it ties back into my family. My family's um, professions. What kind of bear... Hates to go to the dentist. What kind? A gummy bear. Oh, that was so bad. 
but you, <laughs> you did better than most guests. They, I think I've only, I've probably asked this question to probably 10 to 15 women and maybe four or five have actually given me a joke. Because I mean, it's nothing against them, but it is difficult. I think Off I, the cuff. yeah, I think I know probably two jokes. Okay, both of them are. One is extremely inappropriate. And yeah, terrible. nice. The other one is funny, but I, I never tell it right. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm never like I kind of get some things wrong, and I think I've started to make it my own after a while. Nice. <laughs> like, I, I kind of want to hear it now. Can I hear it? <laughs> Not now, but I'll okay. tell you later. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is your favorite part of the human face, and why? <laughs> cheekbones really yeah because like they're so nice that's awesome that's the first time i've heard cheekbones um do you talk to yourself no seriously i don't know it's funny i actually did read a thread about this on reddit <laughs> there's like i i don't think in words you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it's just kind of like so i don't i've never like when i've played with toys i've never like made them talk or really? anything yeah i know I most I talk to myself, but it's mostly to like keep me on track. Mm, like motor, like a, your it's own. It's like motivator. okay, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> this is most like stop, <laughs> stop being distracted by the shiny objects over here. I've but done that, kinda, yeah, for sure. Like kind of where it happens. Yeah, I guess so. In that case, yeah, but I, it's more of like I'm punching myself out of being distracted right. by using my voice as a trigger. Like, yeah. And there's also the whole talking to my dog, like having oh. pseudo conversations with the dog. <laughs> I do talk to my dog. It's like, what are we wearing today? What am I going to wear today? guys? <laughs> Professor. <laughs> Does he help? No, he's terrible. He's a terrible stylist. Oh, can you drive a stick? Nope. Who was your first crush? In real life or just, Either or, oh whichever god. one you're comfortable sharing. Oh my god, Chris Loveridge in the eighth grade, and it was only because my friend liked him. It's like, oh, this is what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, that was it. <laughs> Can you do any accents? Uh, not, not right now. Okay, but I can do. I, I used to be able to do a really good British one. I think that it's. As I've gotten older, it's not so great. But did you ever spend any time over? Anywhere? No, oh, okay. it was more just like watching characters on SNL and you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, do you remember your dreams? I'll, always, every day. Really? I don't remember them day to day, but I remember them when I wake up. I have the craziest fucking dreams ever. You remember like just when you wake up, and then like as the day goes on, you kind of forget. It it it, it varies. I remember the essence of them all day Mm -hmm. i don't remember them the next day usually i used to have a dream vlog because i was on this medication that gave me like really crazy dreams really and i've still been like have i've have i have insane dreams every day so yeah it depends on the intensity of them huh outside of your family who is your oldest friend uh my oldest friend just friend dumped me kind of recently i mean i don't care she sucked but (laughs) I don't, okay. <laughs> I don't really have any old friends. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's people that I've known since college. I didn't really have any great friends from high school. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't like the rape that, but yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really talk to anyone from high school. I would say I have a couple of friends from college that I don't really hang out with anymore, but we're still, we're still friendly, but yeah. yeah, most of my friends are either our grad school or beyond. Okay. Well, that's weird to think about. I just move on real quick. I really do. I'm like hard with, I, I don't maintain friendships very well. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it. I am terrible with keeping in touch, even in this day and age where it's supposed to be very simple, but yeah, like I hate talking on the phone. So that's one yeah. of the things that really are FaceTiming. Yeah. That just really kind of, who's your oldest friend? Uh, my friend Cecily uh, from eighth grade. Oh, that's a pretty name. Like, yeah, she's great. Um, she's just one of those. She doesn't live here anymore, or okay. not. She never lived here. She lives in Dayton. Okay. And it's just one of those friends that we don't. We probably won't talk for like three or four months, and then we'll one one of us will call the other out of the blue, and then I'll just be like the normal. nice. And you know, if she if I'm ever in there, she'll come visit her. You know, or I'll go visit her, and vice versa. So it's just, I mean, eighth I, grade. That's awesome. I, yeah, it didn't start off great in eighth grade. Really? <laughs> yeah, it, we went to, I met her in eighth grade. We went to high school together. Like the first couple years, 
No, like eighth grade was because I was new to the school. Okay. Um, and you know it's a terrible time to be new in eighth grade where like everybody's been there together since kindergarten. Yeah. And, um, so new girl, I got picked on. Oh. Quite. I, I. I've been like picked on a lot. Like start, it was probably starting like fourth grade. I used to get picked on a lot. Really? Yeah. You? Yeah. I was very quiet. I think I just kind of took it as you know quiet, nice. You know, kind of weak. That's oh, I think that's I what it. <laughs> hate when kids get picked on. Like the it was terrible. I'm sorry. I was, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, oh, you're such a uh, nice person. I'm glad you didn't like internalize that. Uh, and... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've get... had to, I had to have a couple fights. Like I had to really box a couple bitches a couple Ooh. times. But <laughs> were you always tall? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was always very skinny, and I really got. I was never smaller. I was very skinny. Yeah. But then probably sixth or seventh grade, I was always one of the taller girls. Okay. Yeah. In class. Don't um, fuck with the tall girls. Like what? Don't fuck with like, because I grew up in a household where it's like, you know, don't start anything, but make sure to finish it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good for you. So, I mean, that's where I always was. Like, I never started a fight. Mm-hmm. I never put hands on anybody first. But... Oh, if that's what you're going to do, I'm if we're going to play this game. I'm impressed and it. also sad, <laughs> but really impressed, but sad. It was a, I'm it was, sorry. It was a weird time. It really was, which is like, so you and Cecily became friends then. Yeah. Like, did she, you know, was she one of those bitches? Well, no, like she was in the group with a lot <laughs> oh, of them, okay. but she's never much of a, like she kind of started off like following along with them, but her personality is so strong. I think it kind of got to her. Like once she got to know me, yeah, it was like, you know, I don't need to follow these girls and you know she made her own decisions and we became friends nice. so, right on cecily word um oh if you could have any superpower what would it be uh jean gray style like psych psychokinesis nice. yeah what is your shoe size uh i'm actually if you measure my feet i'm like an eight eight and a half but they're mother like troll wide <laughs> wide troll girl feet <laughs> so like i wear i like a nine to for slip comfort it in. yeah for comfort you never get tired of blank. Mm, internet. <laughs> I never get tired. I will never get tired of the internet. It's my only friend. It, it's such a vast, <laughs> like you can just really get sucked into a K hole for so long. Yep. Are you proud of yourself? Yes. Describe yourself in one word. Weird. I don't want to use that word, but really, I can't think of anything else. You're weird, and I like it. That's okay. I like you. It's okay. I like you yeah. for being Thank weird. Thank you. I'm, I appreciate <laughs> your weird, and that's time. Yay. Thank you. Thank this you, This was Kate. so great. <laughs> this was so fun. Thank you, everyone who called in. <laughs> <laughs> the phones are lighted up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly my mom. <laughs> and my mom. <laughs> Well, Thanks, moms. <laughs> Thanks, moms. Thank you, Camila, for having me. Um, and where can folks find? Uh, go ahead and plug Dad Pranks again, and like. Sure, you can find us on dadpranks.com, dadpranks.tumblr.com, uh, sensory3mall.com. You can find me at kate k eight hansen dot com. I'm also misery porn on Instagram. <laughs> you um, like the snappies? Yeah, I like the snappies. You just find me on Snapchat. I'm around. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Kate loves the internet, so you can find her. Um, <laughs> you can find all things to do with me at ruggedangel.com and on Twitter at the underscore rugged angel. Always listen to this show on iTunes or Libsyn and uh, also on WMCK.FM internet radio. New shows are Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. and then they repeat on Thursday and Monday. Remember, whatever you do, do it with passion or not at all. Thank you.